Okay, so I don't know how much, how much experience do you have with computers? And programming computers? Uh, I would say th this has been my best First programming. Time? Okay, mm. okay. So traditionally, and also for a long time, when it comes to computer programming, you would write things like the way we have been doing things this is the first thing which is yeah. supposed to be done they say print something <clears throat> then the next thing which you want to be done do this do you maybe ask some information from a person like that and stuff like that so okay. that has been for a long time that was the way programs were done basically the computer ran your program the way you typed things from beginning from the top to the bottom okay. so it ran through everything from the top to the bottom such kind of an approach of doing computer programming is what's known as procedure programming you're okay. following procedure say this is a procedure it doesn't matter whether the procedure makes sense or not as long as uh, that's what the procedure says there are instances where following procedure is very very important okay even if you don't okay. that reminds me of yes i did partly there was a time i wanted to, to start we did pascal mm -hmm. so there was some of the procedures that would follow like you are saying it yes yeah so they'll be done one by one if the first line is done then comes the second line is done then the third line is done like that such a programming language is what's known as a procedural programming language. And the first programming languages did just that. Is that clear? Okay. Yes, the first yeah. programming languages when our friends were inventing these computers and how to program them, they did just that. Procedures. The first thing was done, and second, like that, like that. And if there was some logic which had to be done, that logic was done like that. So you had. Basically, you had a, if someone wrote a program, you had a file which had data, the information, maybe the name of a country or the name of a person and stuff like that. Then you also had, uh, in the same file, you would have a function. Somebody would write a piece of code which they, uh, they would want to reuse, a function. And everything was mixed up. Okay? So eventually... Okay. Computer programs became very, very large and projects were very, very difficult to manage. manage yes. So another approach was devised, which is known as object-oriented programming. In object-oriented programming, what you do is, instead of having the whole file run from beginning to end, what you did in object-oriented programming, the first thing you did was to create something called a class. A class, yeah. A class is, in a nutshell, a blueprint. Let's say yes. you have a plan for the house. Yeah. So if people follow that particular plan for the house, they will come up with only specific types of houses which follow that plan. Is that clear? Okay. Yes. The plan for the house is what is the equi the equivalent for the plan for the house in our programming in programming languages when you're doing object oriented programming languages is what's known as a class then the things you build by following that plan that blueprint those are what are called instances of the class or objects okay so for you to create an object any type of object you want for example, if you have played some, some, I don't know, if you have seen some video games, people playing video games and stuff. Yeah. There are all sorts of things which are moving in a video game. Different things which behave differently. Maybe there are some people or there are some police, there are some police cars which behave differently. Then there are, these are normal things. But really, yeah, what, what you have is a bunch of little things or objects interacting with each other. Yes. Yeah. Now, the issue is, for you to create any of these objects, you need a blueprint. Okay. Yes. For you to create any of these objects, you need a blueprint. 
Are we clear? Yes. Then once you are satisfied with your blueprint, you can create as many objects as you want. Okay. That's up to you. As long as the blueprint is good, you can create as many objects as you want. You can also have what you can say multiple versions of your blueprint. Maybe you started with a certain house plan. Then you want to improve it. Maybe it had two rooms. Now you want three rooms. Or you want three rooms and some bar somewhere there. You understand? So yes. you are improving on an existing house plan. You can also do stuff like that. So that you can build a different type of house. Based okay. on a modification of an already existing house plan. So the existing house plan is left alone. You kind of like copy it. Then you start modifying, making, you start adding things to the copy. Okay? So that maybe you extend this room or you want to add a bar this side. You want to add a swimming pool that somewhere there. Like that. So that at the end of the day, when you, you follow this house plan, you end up with a house with a swimming pool, with a bar, then more rooms, maybe you, sp you, you understand what I'm saying? Yes, I'm getting you. I'm trying to use an example which is familiar to most people. Okay, the point is, before you create such a house, or before you go about creating a house, you need a plan for the house. You need a blueprint for the house. Whether you're building a shopping mall, you need a blueprint for the house. Then you can use that blueprint for the house or for the shopping mall to build as many shopping malls as you want. Okay? Yes. The, each shopping mall you build using that plan, that is what is called an instance of that class or that plan or an object. Okay. Yes. The process of building a shopping mall or a house based on an existing plan, that is what's known as insta instantiation, to make an instant of something. Okay. Yes. So basically, that is the language which is used in this type of computer programming, object-oriented programming. Now, in object-oriented programming, the good part is, which is different, the good part is here, these little houses you have, bu you have built, or these shopping malls you have built, based on this house plan which you have, they keep their own data, and they have functions. They are equipped with their own data and their good functions. Oh, okay. For example, if you create a class or want to create a blueprint for a person, we're going to say, okay, fine. What does a person have? Okay, they must have a first name, last name, gender, maybe whether they are married, do they work, uh, are they black or white, what's the color of their hair, uh, their eyes, all these features. Okay. Like the one we had last, last, the one we were talking about, the car issue. Yes, 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 yes. all these features. These features okay. which are this height, color, married, not married, this is what is called data or attributes. Attributes. Yes. In Python, the equivalent, the, the, these are called attributes. Properties of an object. Okay? Yes. The next, you might, uh, this other, this same person, you might, they might do some behaviors. Like, for example, people can sit down. That is not a property, that's a behavior. You can sit down or they can stand up, they can run, they can swim, they can shout, they can sing. These are behaviors which a person can do. Are we clear? Yes. So, basically, when you, the, the advantage of an object is an object has got data and behaviors in, in, put in a capsule. You know those that medicine which comes in capsules? Mr. Elias? Yeah. Are you aware of that medicine which comes in capsules? The medicine that comes with capsules? In capsules, in capsule form. Like they, yes. give, they, they give you a capsule, then you swallow it. Yes, yes. So yes, basically, I that's what you're doing. Yes, so basically, with an object, what you're doing is 
all the data for that particular object you put it together then you also put the functions which are going to work on that data so you you what you say we say that you encapsulate them so that the data for a particular object doesn't mix with the data for some other object I've created somewhere else. So you might have a case whereby if I'm building a house, I'll decide to say, okay, fine, the color of my house is going to be green. You, it, it, as long as we're using, we use the same house plan, what the color of my house is should not affect what the color of your house should be. You might say you, you want a, a, a house which is, which is with the color of orange. You understand? Yes, yes, I'm getting you. Yes, but we use the same plan to create our house. I created my house, I followed the same plan. You created your house, you followed the same plan. I decide to say, my house is going to be colored green. You decide to say your house is going to be colored yellow. Oh, okay, yes. Yes, this is, there is no, the, 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 the properties of my house and the properties of your house are two separate things. So the data is kept separate for each for each object you create based on this particular thing. The data is going to be kept separate. Okay, so basically that's the, that's the approach when it comes to object-oriented programming. And Python happens to be one of the good and easy object-oriented programming languages to use. However, it also has good aspects of procedure programming language because Python as a language did not just come from nowhere. Is that clear? Python as a language did not just come from nowhere. It is an improvement of on other programming languages where you get ideas from other languages the ideas which seem to work okay uh -huh. so you will find something which looks like uh, you're doing pascal or whatever uh, what the stuff whatever it is you're doing there's still some of those things in python and there is also the bit of object oriented programming so basically what we do is a mixture it's not a pure object oriented programming language it's a hybrid between object ori orienting programming and also procedure so basically mixed stuff are we clear yes yes i'm getting it okay so now let's see how this thing is going to work so basically like i've said a class is a blueprint treat it as a blueprint for creating a specific type of object an object is going to have data or attributes it's also going to have functions which work with that particular object the kind of yes. data which an object is going to have, you have to specify that in a class. Okay. Say this particular object, objects created from this particular class will have this type of data. If okay. after you've created the class, you need to add another property or another behavior, something like that, you have to recreate the class. Yes. So, the attributes are the data which are used in the class. Then the functions which are found in a class are what we call methods. Are we clear? So there are two things. A class has got data which are the attributes and a class has got functions which we call methods. Methods oh, yeah. are functions which are found inside the class. So we're going to try to do this. For example, we are trying. We're going to try to model a car yeah. okay. based on the following attributes: the make of the car, whether it's a Toyota or a Mercedes or a Ford, the model of the car. If yeah. it's a Toyota, is it a Corolla or is a, is it a Ranex? Or is it an Arion? Stuff like that. Or is it a Land Cruiser? Or is it a GX? Okay. Then the year the year in which the car was made. The year of manufacture. You want to know what when was this this car you're trying to buy? When was it made? Okay. 
you also are probably interested in the color of the car is it white is it red is it black yes. then there's also the registration mark the number plate for the car then Hello? yes i'm saying there's also the number plate the registration oh, oh. yes yes then there's also maybe how many people can sit in that car without overloading these are not the only information about the car, but this is the information we have decided to choose that we're going to use. Okay. This information, this, the make, the model, the year, the color, the registration mark, the seating capacity of your car. This is what we call attributes. Okay. Okay. So whenever you're trying to create this car, you have to provide the make. You have to provide information about the model, the year, the color, the registration mark, and also the seating capacity. That is what we are saying. For us to try to model this car, this information has to be provided. When you are trying to create, when you are trying to create this object, okay? Yes. Previously, the creation of an object used to be done uh, manually. Yes, the creation of an object used to be done manually, but these days, with the advancement in programming and stuff, with the advancement in programming and techniques, now, when you are creating an object, this thing can be done automatically. Okay. Okay. And for something to be done automatically, there has to be something which makes it happen automatically. Okay. And that's where this function comes in. Remember when you say when you're creating functions, yeah. when you say DEF, yes. DEF means that you are trying to tell Python you want to create a function. And next is the name of the function. This is the name of the function. In it for initialization, it's short for initialization. Okay. Like I showed you, it starts with two underscores the first underscore, the second underscore. That is just how they decided to do it. Then you say in it, then after that, two underscores again after that, like that. So basically, the whole thing, the whole word, the name of the function is all, all of that. Then after the init, there is parentheses, then what you are supposed to give Python in order, the information you're supposed to give Python in order to create this particular object you want it to create for you. Okay? Yes. The particular object you want Python to create for you, that is what is being referenced to here as self self refers to what object you're going to create okay yes so what's going to happen is when you give me the when you give python the make of the car make which is the same as here then this make of the car is going to be stored here self dot make have you seen that self dot make Yes. Self there is the object you're creating. Then make, mm. then the dot, then make, make is a property of that object. So this mm. op car object you're creating is going to have a make, is going to have another property called mo attribute called model, it should have an attribute called year, color, registration, and seating capacity. So this is how we're going to transfer information when you give Python the make of the car, the model of the car, the year of the car, the color, the registration mark, and the seating capacity, this information is going to be transferred in your in these objects automatically like this. So you're going to say always self dot make then the make. Self dot model then mod equals to, uh, model. Self dot year then year. So basically the year of the car is being stored in a particular object. The model of the car is being stored in a particular object. The color in a particular object, registration mark in a particular object like that, seating capacity. Okay, so this self dot make the model stuff, and they show you which, what are the properties of this particular thing. 
object you want to make. Next, you there are other functions apart. This has to be there because this function, the in initialization function, is used for creating objects automatically. So without it, you can't create anything. So there has to be function def then two underscores initialize init then two underscores then like that, following that particular way of doing things. Are we clear? Yes, I'm following. Okay. Next, you can now create more functions, which do things with the data you have given, what the data you have supplied. For example, if you want to get the make of the car. Okay. If you want to get the make of the car, or you want to get the model of the car, or you want to get the year, or you want to get the color of the car, you want to get the registration of the car, you want to get the seating capacity, or you want to get a description of the car. You can do all sorts of these things. When you create any of these other functions, okay, these other functions, uh, get make, you give the function self as the argument this self represents the object with which the function is being used okay the self represents the object you've created it's like you, you create a house then inside the house you're saying whether you have a toilet it flashes or what, whatever it is so the house then some behavior it has got a flashing toilet so that's what the self is the self represents something you're going to create out of this blueprint are we clear yes yes the self represents whatever object you're going to create out of this blueprint because an object has got data the data is this stuff self.make, self.model, self.year, self.color, self.registration, self.capacity. The functions which are going to work on this data are these ones. DEF, get make, then self. Then what does this do? It just gives you the make of the car. So there is this thing here in triple quotation marks. Do you still remember what this is? This red stuff in triple quotation marks? Mm -hmm. uh, these are not functions. Sorry? Oh, those those ones. The where you say get make, then uh, return. Yeah. Make what is that? What, what is that? Return make of car. What is this it used for? Uh, are they not part of the one that we are just looking at? There is where you. Now, from the list there, no, as you can see, yeah. this is red, right? Yes, so it's a string, right? Yes, a string, but it's not a normal string, is it? Oh, no, not, not, no, sorry, not the list, but the string, it's but not a, it's not a normal string, but the... what is it? What is it called? How do you tell people how your function works? How do you give a brief explanation to say this is what my function does? This this is representing where you have it's, it's like you have this is part of the thing that has been fixed from the main function. No. This is what is called a doc screen. Yes, documentation string. When you ask for how to use this function, this is what is going to be displayed. So those parentheses simply means they are simply presenting a doc string. No, a string in three quotation marks. This. Oh, those three quotation marks. Yes, they represent a doc screen. It's a type, a special type of string. Oh, okay. Then after that, we return. Because it's a function, you give it something, then you want it to give you something back. We say, self, which is the object you're talking about, then we okay. access the make, 
then we get the title. So whatever the name of the car, we capitalize the first letter. The same thing with the model, get model, self, return the model of car, then return self, then model of self, yeah, return self, which is the object, then we access the model, then the title of the car, the, yeah, the title. So model as capitalized, then here, get year. So here we return the year, car was manufactured, return self year. Then color, same. Uh, self, then uh, what does it do? It gives you the color of the car, return self color. Uh, registration mark, self, then return registration mark of car. So we say return self registration mark, then upper. Then there is um, this get sitting capacity self return sitting capacity of a car return self sitting capacity then there is this get uh, descriptive name self return the in a neatly formatted descriptive name for the car long name string self root year plus you add something like that we're going to see how we, what it does so basically what we have here is a blueprint of what our car objects are going to look like our car objects are expected to have a make they expected to have a model they have expected yes. to have a year in which they manufactured they expected to have a color they expected to have a registration mark and also sitting capacity then okay. we have these functions which we can use to get the make of the car for example get make the model of the car get model uh the year the car was made get year uh get the color of the car get the registration mark of the car get the seating capacity and get a description so that's what a class is a class you're defining what data is going to be there this particular objects are creating what kind of data are they going to have and also what functions will be allowed to work on this particular data are we clear yes yes so let's see how that works next so i've explained what the initial init function does you can read that a bit but this is what we use to automatically create objects so the next thing you're going to do is we're going to try to create an object so how do you create the object you're going to try to create an object called a taxi now we know that a taxi is a car. There are different types of taxis, but I'm going to create an object called taxi. And this taxi is a car. Okay. This car here, which I'm saying here, car, this is the same car, which is here. Have you seen at the top here, up the top here, this car here, that's the same car. So I'm trying to use this class as the blueprint for creating my car, which is a, which I'm calling a taxi. Okay. Are you able to get me? Yes. Oh, okay. That's good. Yes. So the first thing I do as I'm trying to create this taxi, I ask myself, okay, fine. What is the make of the car? Because that information is required, right? I say the make of the car is going to be Toyota. So the make of the car, I store it in make. Then next, the model of the car. What kind of Toyota are we talking about? A Corolla. Okay, does that make sense? Hello? Yes. The next, what year was the Corolla made? It was manufactured. Yes, it was 2019. 2019. Then what's the color uh, of the Corolla? Silver. silver. And the registration mark? ABK80, something like that. Then the seating capacity, it can seat five people. So I run this. Okay. So that's what I'm, so basically right now, I have created an object called taxi. Now let us see if this object called taxi actually has been created and how does it work now the first thing you can do once you create an object you can try to access its attributes the data okay you can try to access its attributes you can try to access 
its functions or the methods. Whether you're accessing the attributes, which is the data, which is stored, all this information, all this information, this information, the name of the car, the Toyota, the model, the year, the color, the registration, the sitting, has been stored in taxi. But that's not the only thing which has been stored in taxi. These functions, all these functions, all these functions, get, make, get, all these functions down here, they have also been stored in taxi. Are we clear? Yes. So taxi contains data. Taxi also contains functions. Yes. Is that clear? That is what makes an object powerful because an object can store both data and the functions which are supposed to work on that data nicely. So let us see if actually this information we are talking about, the Toyota, Corolla, the ES, Uber, has actually been stored in taxi. Okay. And if you're trying to do that, that's what is called accessing instant attributes or object attributes. You're trying to access the attributes of the taxi. So how do you access the make of a taxi? You say taxi.make. This is when you're trying to access the data. Okay, so taxi.make. If I say taxi.make, I get Toyota. Do you see that? Yes. I can actually use the same taxi.make in a, in a nice combination here where I can say the taxi is a Toyota. There. The taxi make is Toyota. I can do that. The point okay. is taxi.make. If I want to access the make of the car, I will say taxi, then I put a dot, then I say the attribute or the property I'm interested in. In this case, that's a make. Is that clear? Yes. Next. So the one we are using to enter this data is called the string. No, forget about the this, forget about number five, whatever the string. The point is this accessing the data stored in an object. Oh, okay, okay. That's the okay. point here. If you want to access the data stored in an object, you say the name of the object, and then you put a dot, then the data you want to access. Is it the make? Is it the model? Is it the year? Is it the registration mark? Or is it the color? Like that. Okay? Mm. That's the point here. Here. Next, mm. I want to access the model of the taxi. What model is it? So I say taxi.model. Mm. That gives me Corora. I can, after this taxi.model, I can use this taxi.model in a funny thing like this where I can say the taxi model is Corolla. Okay? Then I want to access the year of the taxi. When the year the taxi was made, I say taxi.year 2019. Do you see that? Yes. Then I can use that information to say, okay, the car was made in 2019. The taxi year of May is 2019. Then I can also access the color of the car, the taxi. Taxi.color, silver. Then I can use that information in something like this. The taxi color is silver. Then I can also get the number plate of the car. Taxi.registration mark, ABK801. I can also get the seating capacity of the taxi. Taxi.seating capacity 5. Okay, then I can use that seating capacity something in like this. The, car, the taxi has a seating capacity of five. So, what I'm trying to show here is, as you can see, this taxi, using this just taxi, we have been able to access everything we know about this taxi. The make of the taxi, Toyota, we say taxi.make. We have accessed the model of the taxi, taxi.model. We have accessed the year the taxi was made, 2009. We have accessed the color of the taxi, silver. We have accessed the registration mark of the taxi, APK801. We have also accessed the seating capacity of a taxi. Five. That is the information you provided here. That's exactly the information which was provided up here. Here. When you're saying, when you are creating the taxi object, you created, the, you, you provided this information and since this process went up, went on without any mistake, 
that information you provided was stored in taxi okay but it's not the only information which was stored in taxi functions were also stored in taxi so the first thing i wanted to show you is the data was stored in taxi are we clear yes yeah the next bit i want to show is that functions were also stored in taxi for example I, if i want to get the make of the taxi we have seen how to get the make of the taxi using the property but remember that this thing also had functions like this like get make uh, get make these functions you remember them get make get model yeah color and stuff like that okay so i can use those also excuse me so let me just a minute try to see what's happening here. Okay, so let us see if those functions get make, get model, get year, those functions which were in the class when we're making the class car. Let us see if they are, they've, they've actually been stored in taxi so that we can use them. Taxi.getMake. You see what it gives you? Yes. It gives you Toyota with a capital letter, right? Have you seen that? Yes, yes. It gives you Toyota. Yes. Then taxi dot model, uh, taxi then dot get the model using a function get model. We get the model Corolla. Corolla then yeah. taxi dot get year twenty zero nine. Then taxi dot color get color silver. Silver. Taxi dot get registration mark. ABK eight zero one. Taxi dot get seating capacity five. Taxi five. Dot get descriptive name for the car. Twenty nineteen Toyota Corolla. So, what I've tried to show you here is when we created the so-called taxi okay there was data which was stored in the taxi are we clear yes data was stored in the taxi but also functions were also stored in the taxi the functions which are stored in the taxi are those functions which are in the class car so apart from storing data when you create when you create a, a an object from a class when you create an object from the class yes you provide information like we did for this taxi the make model yeah silver color stuff like this that's fine this information you've provided here is used by this guy this initial initialization function this is a function which uses that information to automatically create an object for you apart from storing this information your object is also given a copy of these functions each object is given a copy of these functions so that the data and the functions are encapsulated together like they are put in a capsule okay so that if you've got a capsule everything works nicely like that are we clear Are we clear on what we have done so far? Yes, yes. I'm, I'm clear. Okay, now. You see, you are not you are not restricted to only creating uh, what's this? Only one type of uh, object with a particular class. You can create as many objects as you need. Okay? The same way I created taxi, you could change, you say you want to create an ambulance. 
say ambulance. Then you start giving us information about the ambulance. What is the make of the ambulance? What is the model? What is the color? What year was it made in? Uh, what is the registration of the ambulance? How many people can it carry? Then all those things you can give us. So you can create, okay. a, you yeah. can, yes, you can create as many of these things as you want. As long as your class is already there. Are we clear? Yes, yes. All right. Any questions? See there, what do you want? Well, okay, so the next thing we do is you see, you can also, whenever you try to, let's say, for instance, whenever you try to, you have built a class, right? Yes, then you want to probably add some new data to the class, like in this case, this, this information we already had the make of the car, the year the model, the color, registration marks, campus. then for example, you want to add this, the mileage of the car, right? Yes. If when you create an object, then you want the mileage, which is the odometer reading, to have a certain value. For example, we want it to start with zero. Okay, then you recreate a class. If you want to make a modification to a class, then you want to add something like here. You want to add uh, self dot odometer reading, the reading on the odometer. Then we also want to add something, uh, another function, read odometer. We want to add this so that it tells us what the odometer reading is. Another function. When you do this, when you have a class, then you start making changes to it. You have to recreate the whole thing. Is that clear? When you have a class, it's like when you've got a function, then you're trying to make modifications to the function. You have to remake the function. Are we clear? So what I was saying is, when you modify your class, remember on top here, we, we, we already have the class car, right? Med. We have already made the car uh, class. This was our first making of the class car. Okay? It doesn't have something. We have just added. They like the, the odometer thing, the odometer reading. If you add something new, you want to add something new to a class. Like in this case, we are trying to add this odometer reading, the mileage. What is the mileage on the car? So that we know if it's zero, then we know the car is new. If it's not zero, then we know the car is a used car. Okay? Are we clear? If you want to add a piece of data, then you need to recreate the class. Because the class is a blueprint for whatever it is you're doing, you're going to make. So you can add, you're allowed to add new data to the class in the initialization function. You're also allowed to add new functions. That's up to you. Print a statement showing the class mileage. That's what this function does. You're allowed to do that. When you do that, then you run this, then Python is going to have a fresh updated copy of what the blueprint class, so what, what the car class looks like. Okay, so Python is going to update what it has, say, okay, uh, car was looking like that, or now I've been given a new copy of the blueprint on how to make cars and how they behave. Okay, then again, you can remake the car because previously the taxi we had was made using an old blueprint okay now that our blueprint has improved we can again hello 
Y es Y es Hello I can hear you I can hear you, can you hear me? Hello I can hear you, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you see the presentation? Hello. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Hello. I can hear you. What you're saying? Hello. I can hear you. I am to get you. Yes, I can get you clearly. Are you moving or something? Or which one is it? No, there was uh, some movements that were being done. Some changes. They were, they were, they are welding the the grill door. So oh. I was just moving from where I was seated to another. Okay, okay. So what I was saying is, when the blueprint gets updated, like something gets added to the blueprint, which is a class. For example, we have added this, or dometer reading, yes. and given it this value of zero. Then we have also added a new function to the to the class. When you do this, then you have to recreate your object with the new blueprint. It's like you had a, you, you you used to have an old house plan. Then you make changes to that old house plan. Then if you want to make a new house, now you have to use the new house plan. Are we clear? Yes, sir. Yes, so we are still creating, we recreate a new taxi. This time, this taxi is going to be show us when it comes whether there's going to be mileage or no mileage on it. So here, we get a new taxi. Then we try to see if that taxi has been created. Yes, we get the description of the taxi. 2019 Toyota Corolla using this get descriptive name. Then we try to see the if we can access the new thing we added the odometer reading this new thing we added can we access it let's try to see so we're saying taxi dot odometer reading it tells us zero and that's what we assigned it then if you try to get the taxi uh, odometer reading using the read odometer if you read do the read odometer function it tells you this car has zero kilometers on it. Okay. Yeah. Is this clear? Yes, it is. Here we are saying, if you have created a class, then you find there is a need for you. Maybe you, you create. You, maybe you create a. You, you have a house plan for your house. Then maybe the toilet and the shower are outside in the first house plan. Then you create a new house plan, the same house, but now you want the shower and the toilet to be inside the house. It means that you have updated the plan for the house, right? Yes. So which means that all the new houses you're going to make using the new plan should have the shower and the toilet inside the house, not outside like previously. Okay? Yes. Yes. So the point is, when you when when you add something to a plan or to your class, then you recreate the class. Then you have to recreate the objects because your objects would not be able to use the old plan. Your objects you're going to create have to be able to use the new plan. Okay. The next thing is you can make modifications to these properties. The gear, the color, the but, but, but like, yeah, you can try to change the color of the car, but changing the color of the car, like right now with Ratsa and everything, it's a bit of a process, right? The actual make of the car, there's certain things which you can change, there's certain things which you can't change. For example, if you buy a Corolla, then you try to change the Corolla into a Ford, it doesn't work. Doesn't it, work. Yeah, you buy a Toyota, then you want to change it into a Ford. So basically, the make of the car stays the same. The model of the car stays the same. The registration mark of the car stays the same. 
Maybe you can change the color of the car, but changing the color of the car, you have to follow procedure with Ratsa. There is a way in which you can change the value of a car, the, the color of a car. Okay? The seating capacity, you can't change it. Okay? So there are certain things, there are certain attributes you can change. There are others you cannot change. Are we clear? Yes, it is clear. So let us see how you can change the something directly. For example, the odometer reading. Uh, I'm going to do the following. Uh, I'll do this here. I'll say taxi. I'll say taxi. Dot read odometer. So that we see what the odometer is reading on the taxi. What is the odometer on the taxi? So right now the car has got zero kilometers on it, right? So are we clear? Yes, we are. Ah. So now we want to change the zero to 23. So if you want to change the odometer reading, you say you start with the name of the object which is a taxi the taxi then you put a dot then the attribute you want to change in this case we want to change the odometer reading from 0 to 23 are we clear so the name of the object which is a taxi then the method which is the odometer reading then we want to set the value to 23 after we run that so that's how that's one way of setting a value of an object then once we read this again once we read the odometer now it tells us this car has got 23 kilometers on it are we clear yes we are you can do that you can change the value associated with a particular attribute like that you can also do this through a method so we're going to add a method to our class code update odometer through a function inside the class so the class car everything from here the name of the fun of the class is car the data is the same their odometer reading stuff the same but at the end here we have added something a function called update odometer which function we are going to give a certain value then it's going to use that value to update the odometer like that so when you run that when you run that okay then we cre recreate because we have added something to the blueprint we have added this bit to the blueprint then we recreate the taxi then now we after recreating the taxi we want to see what the taxi odometer reading is taxi dot read odometer so right now the taxi has got zero kilometers on it because i've recreated it when you create a new taxi the odometer reading is set to zero automatically here the odometer reading is set to zero however you can change the odometer reading by using this taxi dot update odometer then you give it a value of 23 of 33 when you do that that's fine then you call taxi again read odometer now it tells you this car has got 33 kilometers on it are we clear Mm -hmm. next you can every time you make a modification for example yes. this update odometer here we say if mileage is greater or equals to uh, odometer reading that's fine you can set it but otherwise don't do anything because here there is this thing there's this change we have made because we are trying to make sure 
the person does not throw back the odometer. So if the car has covered 50, uh, 500 kilometers, you don't want to reduce the odometer to 200 kilometers. Okay, so we're trying to prevent that. Again, the issue is when you make a modification, the name of the function is still the same. You have seen? Update odometer here. Update odometer here and update odometer here. The function is still the same. What is different is what's under the function. This under the, what the function is doing. So even when you change how a function works inside the hood, okay, you have to recreate the the class because what you have done are you have made updates. So when you do that, okay, then I recreate the taxi, then the odometer reading, I update it to 33, then that is not 33, then I try to reduce the odometer reading to 29, say, okay, now it's supposed to be 29, then it tells you, you can't throw back an odometer. Is that clear? Yes. Yeah. So the point here really is you can make modifications. Modifications are allowed. You can make modifications to the attributes of a particular object. This other one, you can do an increment with the odometer. Then you can you, you can have different ways. You can add different ways of uh, adjusting certain things. So here if somebody tells you how many kilometers, they give you how many kilometers the car has driven, then you can add those to the odometer. And basically, that's what this thing does here. It says you add, you give it kilometers, then it's going to check if the kilometers are greater or equal to zero. If the kilometers are greater or equal to zero, then okay, the car has moved something. Then you can increase the odometer reading with the provided kilometers so that the odometer changes. Otherwise, you can't. If you give it the negative value, basically trying to roll back the odometer. Okay. Again, okay. yeah. So we have added another function or another method to this class. So every time you add something, every time you add something to how uh, a class works, you have to recreate the class so that you have an updated copy of of what is. Of whatever it is it's like when you when when you when you have a plan for your house right yes when you have a plan for the house yes. then yes. you make you make modifications to your house in other countries they don't allow you to make modifications for your house until after you have submitted to the council what those modifications are going to look like then the council has approved Yes, but in our countries, when you make modifications, like in Zambia, when you make you when you make a modification to you, you have a plan. There's a plan you submitted to the council. Then you modify the plan after you've built the house. Now you want to add this and this and this and this. The modified plan has to be submitted to the council. Yes, is that clear? It means now that you have a new structure. Yes. That's exactly what you're doing here. That's why we are recreating this class car. Because when we add something, we need to submit this new class we have made. We need to submit it to Python and say, Python, this is now the new plan for the house. Use this new plan. Are we clear? Yes. Yes. So basically, the process of you submitting a plan after you've made a modification is the same thing we're doing here. Every time you modify a class, the name of the class you've been dealing with is the same, it's car. Every time you modify it, every time you modify this thing, you have to submit it to Python and say, uh, here is the updated plan. Okay? Yes. Whether you... This, Maybe your your bedroom before it was like inside, even inside, the, let's say inside your bedroom. Maybe before it wasn't the master bedroom. 
Now you have added things inside your bedroom. Now it has got a toilet, it has got a shower inside your bedroom. That's why it don't come out. That plan has to be submitted. Say, I have made this modification. Now this part is now a master bedroom. Are we clear? Yes, we are. Any modification, whether something which is obvious or under the hood modification, they have to be submitted. So the same thing with this thing. Every time you create a class, then you modify that class. You keep on. That's how. That's how the whole thing works. You keep on modifying it, making it better. Every time you make it better, you have to submit a copy of the modified copy so that Python can use the modified copy. Okay, so that you can also use that to build. You can use a modified copy to build your stuff. Okay. okay. Then you now create yes okay okay no i'm i'm seeing the create the car object taxi mm -hmm. well now we come here yes. now we come here taxi. then we read the taxi odometer it's telling us it's zero then we increase the odometer reading after we have covered the distance of 100 100 kilometers we increase the we want now we, now we have the capacity to increase the odometer reading by 100 that then you read odometer reading that now 100 meter then you try to reduce the odometer reading by 10 say you want to remove it's going to tell you no you can't do this are we clear yes we are mm -hmm. now so basically that's the first part of how you create a class then how you access uh, items in a class, how you get the functions, then how you use the functions to make modifications to the data and stuff like that. Okay? The next thing is really, you can have something called inheritance. Okay? You have a class then or you have a plan then someone wants to use your plan they borrow your plan then they go and add things to it so that they can come up with a new plan are we clear yes we are. what we are talking about here is not just a simple modification of a plan this one, what you're talking about here is a, like someone borrows your plan, you copy, they, you, give, they, you get a copy of your plan. Then, they, based on your plan, they add new things, they remove certain things based on your plan so that they come up with a new plan. And they submit that to the council and they start making stuff from them. Is that clear? Yes, I'm seeing it. Yeah, so that process is what is called inheritance. And such a process happens in programming. When you create a class, then based on that class you have created, you try to get another class from it by adding things from that class. Okay? That is what is called inheritance. The first class you created... The first class you created, that is what is called the parent class. The new class you create based on the first class, that is what is called the child class. The process, the relationship between child and parent is what is called inheritance. It's like when you, it's like when you have uh, when you have children. Huh? Some of your children might, might inherit everything you have, like... Uh, Maybe your behaviors, maybe appearance and stuff like that. Is, is that clear? Yes, I'm getting it. But no, the network was uh, trying to start with G, G, but now we are, we are back. Okay. So what I was trying to say is when you have got kids, yeah, when you have got children, right? Your children might inherit your appearance. Uh, how you do things, they might look like you, and stuff like that, right? Yes. But they might also inherit more things 
they might uh, apart from what they have got from you they might also have got something from their mother so at the end of the day what you have is not really a copy of you yes yes it's a copy of you with the major modifications yes yeah so the same thing happens with classes you might have a class already in place it works fine but then you want to make another class based on that existing class for example an electric car and a car mm. so there's we know what a car looks like right cars use fuel and stuff like that then you got electric cars yes yeah electric cars are also cars right yes yeah but they're a special type of cars because electric cars if you look at an electric car where the where the where the engine is there you know in an electric car there's nothing in an electric car there's nothing where that engine is an electric car does not have an engine oh, okay are you I'm aware of that Okay, so that's what I'm trying to say. An, an electric car does not have an engine. So as much as it is, a, it is a car, it has got certain things which make it look like a car, but it also has certain other things, or it doesn't have these other things, which make it different. Okay. Yeah. So what we are going to do here, we are going to show how to create a class based on another class. Are we clear? Based on another yes. class which is already existing. How do you create a class based on another class which is already existing? Are we clear? Mm, I'm getting it. Okay, so this is how you start. So you start with class. So you tell Python you want to create a class. Then you tell Python the name of the class you want to create. Electric car. Then on what class is it based on? It is going to be based on the car class. So you're going to get a lot of things from the class car in your electric car. Are we clear? Yes. So the first part here is the name of your child class. Then inside the parentheses here, that's where you put your parent class. Then next, what information are you going to require? What information do you need for your electric car? Of course, your electric car will need a name. It will need a model, a year, color, registration mark, seating capacity. Then th this self refers to the electric car itself. Are we clear? Are we clear? Hello? Yes, yes. Now, if you look at Mark here, say we, we are saying the electric... Are you getting me? Yes, I can hear you. Are you getting me? Yes. I can hear you. Okay. So if we are saying the electric car should have a make, it should have a model, you should have a year, a color, registration okay. mark, and sitting capacity. If this is what you are saying, cars also have got the same information, right? The normal car also has got the same information, right? Yes. Yeah. So, the way to tell Python, yes. say, look, yes, I need the make, model, year, color, registration, and all these things, but... I want you to get these things from somewhere. I want you to get them from the car. You do this. You say super. You use the super function. Then after the super function, you put the in initialization function. Then what properties or attributes do you want to inherit? These are the things you want to inherit from the, the parent. 
from the car. These are the yes. these are the properties. The yes, these are the properties. You are, on top here. There is an initialization on top here. These are the prop, uh, attributes your electric car is going to have. Your car will have a make, a model, a year, a color, a registration mark, sitting capacity. These are the ones you want to inherit from the parent, which is car. You want to inherit from the car, from the parent, the make, the model, the year, the color, registration mark, sitting capacity. You want to get all these things from the parent. So just like this, when you run this, a very, very short. It's very short because most of the things, we don't have to write them, we have inherited them from the car. Then we create an electric car called Tesla, electric vehicle. Then we say, now we are not using car here. If you notice, now we are saying electric car. Are we clear? Hello? Hello? Okay, so now we are saying electric car. We're not saying car. Previously, we're saying taxi car. If you remember very well, when we're creating here, we're saying taxi, then car. You see that? Now we are not doing that. Now we are creating an electric car. An electric car based on the fact that we have inherited things from the car, which is apparent. So it, Tesla EV, electric vehicle, electric car, make Tesla model, model S, year 2021, color red, registration mark AIC 540, sitting capacity 5. There. Then for this Tesla, based on inherited, you can say Tesla.make, if you make, it tells us it's a Tesla. This make thing here comes from the parent. This is inherited from the parent. The model, Tesla model. It also comes from the parent, model S. Tesla year. Tesla car. Red. Tesla registration mark. That. Tesla seating capacity. Tesla description. Then. These things Sitting capacity, stuff like that, these things. The, this object is able to do this. This Tesla is able to do this because it inherited these things. Are we clear? Yes, yes. It inherited them from the parent. You can, apart from inheriting things, you can add your own stuff. To your tesla for example you can add your own properties attributes since it's an electric car it should have a battery you say battery size for the car is because it's electric they can it can also have a function which describes what the battery looks like describe battery like this now we are adding these things to the electric so we start doing the same thing we have been doing adding attributes making modifications Adding methods, you're modifying, then you rerun this. Electric car. Then you rerun your electric vehicle. Then your Tesla, get a description. Then you describe the battery of the car. This car has a 70 kilowatt battery, like that. Okay, so what you're saying is the child, after you inherit things, the child also has things you can add to it. I want to test something. Younger. Let me just test something and see if it's actually possible. Because I don't think I specified that. Uh, Odometer reading. Okay, okay, even that. So everything from the parent. Did I? When I was creating electric. Yeah. Okay. Are we clear? Very clear. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a function might exist in the parent, but you also want to 
the chart to have the same function, but the implementation to be different. Okay. Okay. Sometimes you have a function which exists in the parent car, like in parent class, for example, here. Uh, at the bottom here, you have a function called fuel gas tank. Because if you're driving a car which uses petrol and diesel, once in a while you have to go to the electric uh, fuel filling station to go and put up some gas, right? But electric vehicles don't do that because electric vehicles you plug them so this fuel gas tank thing here in an electric car is going to have a different behavior so you can define a different behavior for the electric car which is a child so when so so when 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 the when a function exists or when a method exists in a parent class and that same method exists in a child class then you create an object based on the child class what is going to be used is the version of that function in the child class not in the parent class are we clear okay yes yes so here i create a taxi again taxi. yeah then i check if there is a we can fill the gas tank yeah we can because we can fill the gas tank because this car is very gas tank right that's a taxi no more taxi then i create a tesla then i check if you can fill a gas tank then it tells us this car does not need a gas tank are you seeing it's the same thing we're calling we're calling the same function fuel gas tank we call the same function on okay yes on uh we call the same function on on an electric vehicle and it tells us this electric vehicle doesn't need a gas tank is that clear yes yes okay so with that information uh let us try to see uh, i'll stop this one here i'll stop let us try to see if uh we can actually work out of let me 